So, you want to make a spinning motion graphic circle thing that spins, and you haven't played Duck Duck Goose. Shame on you. Hey guys, welcome back to Touched by Kai, I'm Kai, and today we are back in Blender 2.8. Once again, taking a look at a spinning thing, the thing I just said, alright, well you're not paying attention, guys, come on now. Really, really now, come on. Anyway, we're gonna be deleting default cube and the lamp today. I really, we gotta use them. I'm sorry. We're gonna hit B to box select over default cube and um, our lamp and hit delete on my keyboard to get rid of that stuff because we don't need it. Select our camera and hit Alt G and Alt R to clear the location and rotation. We're gonna hit RX 90 on my numpad, left click to confirm that, and then GY to move our camera back. Left click to confirm. Sweet. Zero on my numpad, and now we are all set up to go. In the camera tab, real quick, I want to go ahead and change our type from perspective to orthographic. Yes. Um, and we'll just change our scale for now, just to something like five, I guess. We'll change it later on. I'm going to go to our, our, our uh, scene tab here and change the frame rate from 24 to 60 because motion graphics. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and open up our timeline here and change my start frame to zero. Yeah. Perfect. So... Hit Shift A on your keyboard to add in a circle. And before we do anything, before we, before we move around, before we click anywhere else and mess up this circle, I want to hit Add Circle down here. And we have to, we have to change the fill type from nothing to triangle fan. Now, we're going to do this, and then you can, we can change the amount of vertices to something in increments of... Um, in increments of 12 so if you want to go 12 uh, uh, uh 24 32 whatever if you want to do something like that and then you can't i'm sorry 12 16 uh 16 32 you know uh 64 whatever um that's the best way to keep it in 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 16s so let's just keep it on 32 for now and, I'll, and you'll see why later on all right we can move in and click around now we get it uh tab to go into edit mode and we're gonna go ahead and zoom on in here and change up here from vertice mode to face select mode. And I'm going to double tap A until nothing is selected. So now it looks like this. And we're going to go ahead and just select every other piece of this. So we're going to go ahead and hit hold down uh, shift and then just left click every other piece of this triangle fan circle. There we go, all the way around. Now, as you can see, if, if this was instead of six, if this was if this was instead of 32, 33, it would be off by one, and then like there would be two that were selected right next to each other. So try and keep it in in 16s or or a, or a number that would work with that. So yeah, we're gonna keep it like this for now. All right, sweet. Go into Material tab here, and then hit this little drop down and select Material. Then hit the little then hit this little plus button right here and add in a new material. And we're going to call this one, uh, just, uh, let's, whatever the first color we want to do is, which let's just do, like, I did that before. Let's just do, like, I don't know, we never use pink as a color. I never, ever use pink. So let's use pink today. Why not? Um, and then we're going to change this color material to black. So we're going to name the first one black. Just double click in there. Now, of course, we're going to actually change these colors to black. So I'm going to scale, I'm going to uh, click this little box down here. And then just drag it almost all the way down to black. I don't want to be solid black, just almost black. Uh, and then this pink color, you guessed it, we're going to make it yellow. No, I'm joking. Uh, we're going to make it <laughs> We're gonna make it pink. Uh, a nice shade of pink, though. Nothing crazy here. Something like that. Maybe like a... Yeah, that's nice. All right, sweet. Cool. Now, with the pieces we have selected, I'm going to hit a sign with the pink color. And then hit Control-I to invert our selection. Select the black color and then choose a sign. Now, if we hit Tab to go back out of edit mode and then go to render viewport shading, or material rather, you can see now we have those colors in place. Looks great. I love the way it's looking. I want to go ahead and change the black color. Turn the specular all the way down. Turn the roughness all the way down. Same thing with the pink color. RX90 on my numpad there. Uh, hit zero to go back in the camera's view. And now you can see we have this all set up. Frame 10. I'm going to hit S. And we're going to hit... Uh, you know, we'll do on, on frame 30. We'll hit I scaling. Just the same way it is right now. Um, and then... On frame 10, we'll hit S to scale it up just a little tiny bit. Let's scale it up like that. Then we'll hit I, scaling. And then on frame 0, we will hit S, 0, left click, and then I, scaling. It's on 0. It goes really big, scales down to a specific size right about there, and then scales down just a slight bit more to 150. Sweet. Now, with some rotation, I'm going to go ahead and on frame 10, I will hit um, I, rotation. 
and then on frame eh, let's do 70 we'll hit r y 90 on my numpad left click to confirm that i rotation now uh on frame 170 once again we will just scale we will rotate just a little tiny bit so r y just move it down just a little bit then hit i rotation then we go back to the zero frame <laughs> and then on zero we will hit r y i know you can't see anything but trust me it's doing it uh 90 negative and then left click and then hit i rotation perfect so now what we have is this so as you come up do some crazy rotation slow down a little bit and then start going a little with a little bit more rotation sweet um actually kind of want to pan this rotation back on 170 so it's too much so hit r y and then we'll just move it up a very slightly and then hit i rotation and now it should look like this yeah yeah we'll get rid of uh the 70 keyframe altogether sweet now real quick just to, just to make this go out i will on one the uh, 120 hit i scaling on 130 i will hit s to scale it up a little bit then hit i scaling and then on 150 i will hit i scaling but hit s zero first s zero to scale to zero and then i scaling right there now kind of move this one this 230 hit g to move it to 140 instead so perfect all right cool i like it it goes back up and i kind of want to rotate just a little bit so hit i rotation and then on 150 we'll hit r y 90 negative and then left click i rotation all right a lot of process there now when we play this you can see it's, it rotates around and then it's going to go down like that sweet so now it kind of loops which is nice but now we need to duplicate this because it's not really looking like much of anything at the moment so i'm going to hit uh uh but first, we're going to turn on uh, the magnet tool because it's going to be easier, much easier to do this like this. So hit this uh, magnet tool up here. And then because it's going to snap on the grid, if I hit shift D, it's going to snap way up there. And you can leave it like that if you really want to. But I'm going to make the grid a little bit smaller. Um, so we're going to go ahead and hit this little button right here to drop down the overlays and turn the scale of the grid floor to 0.1 right there. So now it's smaller. Now we can hit shift D, Y. And then move this back by one little notch there. So now it's snapping. We don't have to have it snap because our camera's in orthographic mode. So you're not going to be able to tell anyway. If it's like this far back, it's going to look exactly the same. But it's just it, me. <laughs> it's going to bug me. All right. So on this pink color, I'm going to hit three. And then we can go ahead and change this to like, we can just leave that as pink one. Because I'm just going to darken the pink color. We're darken it. And we will bring it a little bit more to the reddish pink side. Then I'm going to hit S uh point zero five no no sorry s one point five one point one it's one point one s one point one there we go so now we have it just point one size bigger than the previous one um now i'm gonna go ahead and uh do this again so we're gonna hit shift d uh g y move back by one hit s one point one and you know what actually we can't do it like that we have to do it like this i'm sorry go into edit mode and then hit s 1.1 there we go because if we don't it's it's not going to take it because we've already created some scale keyframes so we have to do that we have to go into edit mode so hit tab then s 1.1 there we go so now it uh, is actually bigger than what it is now this one needs to be up even more than that so s 1.1 uh perfect so now we have three different uh, uh circles here that are all different sizes we can hit on this one right here two uh two and then change this to another color as well i want to go this way with this instead because i don't like the way that's looking so we'll go like this trying to get these colors to still look good though pink was a mistake <laughs> let's just uh let's just ignore that <laughs> let's just let's just change this to like green or something <laughs> pink was a mistake <laughs> Hit A in the timeline and hit G to move this up by 10 frames. Then the same thing with this guy right here. A, hit G to move it up to 20 frames. Now this is going to be cut off here. So we have to change this to the last keyframe, which is 270 now. So 270. I might as well just bump it up to like 300. Now when we play this, you can see I have quite a few more little rings that come out, which just looks very cool. And they all go away, of course, as well. So... Hope you, ladies and gentlemen, enjoyed today's tutorial. Very cool motion graphic, like transition-y type thing. Um, I will see you in the next one, but until then, bye-bye.